Science Unscripted. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Science Unscripted. It's Connor here. And Gabe. And I think anyone who is listening to this or watching this right now, you're aware of the fact that our, our phones, they record so much information about us. Yeah, they know everything. Where we go, uh, what, what the products we buy, what we search for. What we um, message our significant others. On the internet. It also learns a lot from, from the thing I'm using right now. This My voice. voice. As a matter of fact, uh, it can learn so much from our voice that the people who study this for a living don't even know how much yeah, we are, companies can learn. We are going to jump into that kind of scary unknown aspect of AI and data surveillance almost by going to a guy named Jacob, uh, Jacob Kruger. He's based in Berlin, and it's his job to figure out what companies and some bad guys out there are trying to do with your voice information. Science Unscripted. I'm Jakob Kröger. I'm a privacy researcher at the Weizmann Institute for the Network Society, which is also known as the German Internet Institute. And my research focuses on the privacy impacts of mobile and IT devices, especially on the uh, kinds of information that companies can infer from the sensor data that's collected around us. So Jacob, I know a lot of people out there are aware of the fact that this, this device here that we all carry in our pockets every day, it, it gets a lot of information about us. Um, what surprised me about your research was one aspect that I, I hadn't been thinking of, it's voice. How much information can be learned from a human voice? Uh, could you start off by telling us some of the things or one of the major things that tech companies or companies period can learn just from our voices? Um, so, yeah, apart from this linguistic content that you have in voice recordings, um, companies could use your voice characteristics to infer stuff like your biometric identity, stuff about your personality traits, physical traits, uh, geographical origin, for example, emotions, level of intoxication, uh, sleepiness, age, gender, health condition, and even stuff like uh, your social, uh, socioeconomic status, for example. All estimates, of course. Well, <laughs> all I have to do is say one thing and my device knows that much about me, how big I am, how drunk I am. Geographical how information. Much, how much money I make I mean, at work. Like, I mean, some of this is probably intuitive because when we listen to other people, right, you would also hear if another person is drunk, for example. But these algorithms can lear learn more about you the more data they have about you. So obviously they could also try to infer something about you from one voice command. But if they have voice commands from you over uh, a number of years, obviously this would give them uh, more possibilities to infer and uh, sensitive information about you. I mean, one thing that could happen is uh, a company analyzes your data and let's say you cough or your voice sounds hoarse or nasal or anything and they infer something about your health. They have a health profile on you and they distribute this information to health insurances, for example. And private health insurances in Germany and many in, in many insurance systems around the world, they can adjust your insurance premiums ba based on that or based on the assumptions they make about your health. So it's also possible if, if two people are applying for the same job and the company has this kind of information, they could look at both those people and say, look, uh, this lady over here seems to be very healthy. She maybe has five, six, five, six or seven sick days a year. And this guy over here, you know, he's sick 15 times. Let's, uh, let's take candidate A. Yeah, he seems to be a smoker or he drinks so and so much and stuff. Uh, seems to be a more responsible person and so on. And one problem that we have in, in Europe and around the world is oftentimes inferences that company draw about us are not recognized as personal data. So there's no real way for us to have insight into what companies infer about us and no way of really correcting it. So in, in, in Europe, under this new uh, data protection regulation, um, this question is decided by the courts. So the courts would decide at the end if inferences are personal data or not, but they're not personal data per se, which is a big problem, I think. Jacob, there's something I have planned to play for you. And um, before I play it, I, I have to ask, it's kind of a personal question, whether you're familiar with dating apps? Uh, I've used uh, a dating app in the past, so in that sense, I'm... I'm Okay. Yeah. So the latest twist in the dating app game, as I understand it, is now 
Um, is Wait, now... hold on. Are you using dating apps? I thought you're married. <laughs> <laughs> It's research, Gabe. It's it's research. Um, is one called Hinge, um, and Hinge has introduced something called, and I forget the term for it. It's an audio greeting, and the idea is that as opposed to just having a picture of yourself or text, um, that you could you know introduce yourself through an audio greeting that people could hear your voice. Uh, some of these have been going viral on various platforms. I'm going to play one for you now, and I want. The, I want you to see if you can figure out what possibly a company could learn from this, I guess, if they were listening Let's to this. See. This is this guy's All kind right. of humorous greeting. Here we go. Feeling super stressed, so I went to the doctor, and she gave me some pills for anxiety. So I tried them out, and I ended up adopting six pet rats. Fraud chicken. <laughs> Dan. This was, I don't know if, if you could hear all that. that. This was a guy basically saying that he felt anxiety, went to the doctor, and um, ended up getting pill, pills and adopted some pet rats, is, is how he put it. Um, I think he's trying to be funny there, but his, 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 his voice doesn't tell me that much, I don't think. But you would, you would say the opposite. Let's say the features that you can look at uh, if you look through the eyes of the algorithm, are just incredibly diverse. You could not look at, uh, not only look at, uh, obviously stuff like accent or dialect or sociolect or lexical diversity. Let's say kind of the words he uses, what kind of filler words he uses. And if a company has data from million, millions and millions of people, they will recognize certain patterns. And it could well be that there's a pattern that's recognizable that tells something about, let's say his um, mental health, his personality, um, his age, probably, his current emotions. Um, the, the, the thing is, as I said, these algorithms are so complex that it's just a little hard for uh, ordinary individuals and even for me as a privacy researcher to uh, really understand what an algorithm could glean from it right now. I got an email from Google last night. I was you know, flipping through my emails that I, I do from time to time, and I, it was my timeline. And every single day in November, it showed me where exactly I went. And so, I had, like, pictures of where I ate. And I looked through this, and I was like, yeah, Com you're right, you're right. Kebabs. You're right. Yeah, there were a lot of kebabs. <laughs> Anyways, um, yep. I, that didn't, it didn't scare me. I'm wondering whether if I had seen that five years ago, whether that would have just freaked me out. And now that... Time has gone by. I don't even. I'm not even sure. I really care anymore. Do, uh, do we? Do we not care enough? I guess is is the question that I'm trying to ask you right now. Have, have we just become dulled by all the information that our devices know about us? I I totally feel you. I totally feel you. And there's a lot of apathy happening, of course. I mean, people, or let's say a resignation, maybe people see so much data is collected about us. We still need to use these services. You don't want to be someone who lives in the woods without smartphone and everything. And I think this is just, it's a huge problem that cannot be solved. Uh, so right now the weight is put on the shoulders of individual data subjects, which is not the solution. I think we need to change the laws and the laws need to say more about the substance. Meaning uh, right now they say it's okay if you consent to it. But our law, we should as a society ask the question, what kinds of data collection and processing feel okay for us as a society? Where do we want to put limits even though a person would give their consent, maybe for financial incentives or because they need a service. You know what I mean? Yeah, so where should the line be drawn then? How, what should a device be able to infer from my voice? I'm, I'm posing that question to you. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, that's an extremely complex question that I as an individual researcher cannot uh, probably... I cannot answer it. We probably won't find a solution today, but uh, it's, an, it's an ongoing discourse. And I personally think it's more about the use and the consequences. I mean, just imagine you have a smartphone that analyzes your health. You don't need to go to the doctor in the future. Could save a lot of healthcare cost. But we need to do it in a way that is much more transparent than today. Companies need to inform us about these inferences that they are drawing. And we as a society need to decide what, what kinds of use cases can they use the data for and where do we want to draw a line. And that's a decision that I cannot make. It's basically an ethical and political question. Science Unscripted.
And that was Jacob Kruger talking to us there from Berlin. I just want to double down on the fact, Gabe, that I downloaded that dating app for this show, for for this research. I want to I want to kind of make sure that people out there are you know try, that. Are you trying to Are you trying to convince me? Everyone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with some some interesting and kind of scary stuff, honestly. Well, of course, they know everything. Companies at this point, who who doesn't know that? Yeah, but I, your voice is different. I do think voice is different because, again, this this is a this is a device that I can leave at home, and I try to do that as often as possible. The the you know what I mean. And so you can try to keep yourself off social media or away from the devices that track you. Like, and yet, any time you speak into a microphone like this one, at mm -hmm. any point, you are giving away everything. Practically speaking, yeah. So what, 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 what can be done? Take the technological capabilities away from companies or... or I think as bar them, as, bar them as Jacob, legally. Is Jacob said it, it, it's tough because it's it's what? a it's a boring answer. Uh, let's be honest. It, it that, is a really and, boring and, answer, and it's anticlimactic and it's 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 unfulfilling. <laughs> yeah, and again, yeah, if you're if you're cynical, you might suspect that either due to lobbying or the age of the people who typically make political decisions, or for other reasons, that these kinds of changes aren't happening fast enough. And I would be the first to say that's how I feel that the changes or the our data privacy our data protections um, they don't they don't it feels like they almost don't exist sometimes and that the that technology has advanced so quickly compared to the laws to protect our data uh, that we are f almost a decade behind the curve at this point but the answer seems to be changing those laws do you care about my data about companies being able to infer these things from your voice it's, is it what keeps you up at night? Uh, no, I, 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 I hate saying this because this is what everyone says. Oh, I've, I have nothing to hide. I'm not saying that I have nothing to hide. In fact, I do care about it a lot. And I, I do, I, I'm sure I have things to hide. It's just if you... If you... Why? Are, Why? Why? Because, because of other... Like Jacob was saying, because it's, it's not about me, it's about other people. So I don't feel like I could personally be taken down by some, based on the information I have out there. Maybe I could, maybe I couldn't. There are a lot of people who could, and it'd be totally unfair. And it, it shouldn't be... The vulnerable groups out there. Minority, the people with chronic illnesses or... Minority groups or, uh, you know, yeah, groups that have been attacked throughout history or somebody who would make a decent political candidate on either side who then gets taken down because so much data has been, you know, siphoned off from them that one of their secrets is out. I don't like, yeah, I don't like the idea that we are, all of our information is out there for anyone to pick through. And it's not about me, it's about, it's about everyone. But you don't, you don't care. Or you do care. Uh, again, it's, it's confusing. And, and I think he, he made, he, it, it, from talking to him, it came, it, I got the feeling that he, there is, they have too many capabilities. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's out of control. Yeah. But I still got a almost a resignation from him. He seemed optimistic, but almost like well, there's nothing we can do about it. And I, I, I don't like that feeling. It's a, it's a powerlessness. Yeah, yeah. Once again, I feel powerless. Well, in this, let, in well, let's 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 world. hope. Here's to hoping that we have given everyone who's listening, watching this, a little more power. Because sorry, power what, begins with recognizing a problem. What, and what this I, is this is step one. What I'm trying to say with that is that it's it's hard for me to keep caring about. There's so many different things to care about at this point. And now I have to care about care about this? Yeah. As well? <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have to. And the, you, the laws should be there already. And you shouldn't have to worry about it. Because that's why you know politicians and all of their assistants are out there to to take care of this before it's a problem, so that we don't have to deal with it. And they we, messed it up. They're behind the curve. Yeah. No. At the very least, we know about the issue with voice. I didn't know about that before. And knowing about the problem is the first step, I would say, toward correcting it. If anyone out there has anything else to say on this, uh, we are more than open to more information on this topic. Send us a, an audio message. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the way to do it. Send us an audio message, and we will learn everything about you. Or an email: sudw.com. Science unscripted. 
or comment.